Hi everyone, it's Julia from Crosspatch. It's going to be the headless lady today because I'm going to show you some snail trails. So as you can see, I'm leaning on a lovely French General snail trail quilt. Um, I make some, well, Handy Andy makes templates for me, but they're my design from doing snails trail. And the templates come in a box together with patterns to make a bag and a quilt. Um, plus a more simplified quilt um, and I'm going to show you those in a minute. I'm just going to show you the templates. I've got them set out on a um, square of fabric here. These are what the templates look like. We'll come back to them in a minute because I'm going to show you the samples. So here's the bag pattern you get. So it's to make the bag like this with plaited handles. Um, here's another colourway. This is in Moda Bliss fabric. Um, here's another colourway in some Moda fabric again with the plaited handles. Um, this is my, this fits perfectly on my dining room table. So this is my dining room tablecloth. So it's all beautifully, it's been washed so many times. You know, when you've had a quilt and you wash it and wash it and it goes all lovely and kutchy and that's what it's like anyway. So here's a blue one. Again, it's French general fabrics on this one. Here's a blue one. Um, that was a yellow and a gray one here. I made these a couple of years ago. So again, this has been uh, just laid over a chair in the shed. So there's a gray one, again, Moda. Now this is the newest one. So this is all in Dutch heritage fabrics and I love this. Do you know when you put calico on it, can you hear that? The calico's got a sound to it. Do I sound weird? But I just love the sound it makes. So here's the one with the Dutch heritage fabrics. And when I said the simplified version, this is cut so you get everything out of one of my specially cut layer cakes that I've done for Create and Craft. So it's all a combination of the Dutch heritage the standard Dutch heritage and the Bridget Giblin Dutch heritage French vintage fabrics. And again, I've specifically cut layer cakes for this for creating crafts. So you've got an equal amount of the pale background colors and then the pattern colors. So I've cut a pack for this and I've cut one in the, um, in sort of French generally reds and creams. So it'll look more like this one under here. So when you get your pack, as I said before, you'll get a pattern for the bag and a pattern for the quilts. Um, the patterns are quite comprehensive and they will give you step-by-step -step instructions. Um, this pattern, it will say if you've cut the, if you've got my templates, cut it out, blah de blah, this way. Um, if you haven't actually got um, my templates and you don't want the investment in the templates it will tell you if you've got a third you need thirds of a meter of fabric you waste a lot of fabric if you haven't got the templates and how to cut them out so it'll show you how to lay your fabric out and then it will tell you step by step by step by step how to build up each snail um, one snail block is 12 and a half inches before you join them together so the bags have got one snail block and then they've got a two and a half inch slash three inch border around them so you will get if you haven't got the templates you will get um, a cutting guide which is that so that will tell you what size you have to cut which as you can see you can see why i've made the templates because you look at that and think oh good grief can't be bothered to cut all those out Right, so you get those two sets of patterns. Um, what I've done in the latest patterns, I've added an extra sheet, which will tell you how to cut out of a layer cake. So I'm gonna show you today how I cut it out of the layer cake. So get your, la your layer cake. So let me show you the French general one I've cut, which is over here. So these are the French general ones. So you've got typical French general pinks and reds, and then I've put, some neutrals to go with them. Okay, it's, uh, there's a creamy one in there as well. These are like some of the original Rouenery fabric and some from the latest ranges. Okay, when you um, get your layer cake, match each patterned one up with, um, with a background one, with one of the creams. So 
let's put that red one with that cream one. So I put that red one with that cream one and I place them on top of each other, dead on top of each other like that and put them on the mat. Um, if you've got a twirly mat, it's really helpful. Set them out like this. There's pictures in the destructions of how to put them on. So I put the big template in the bottom corner, the smallest triangle next to it, then the next size up next on top of that. The medium sized triangle is there and the little squares that go in the middle are there. So cut them all out together so they'll all be the same size and they'll go together nicely. Save this bit at the end because you can make two and a half inch squares out of these. You cut a two and a half inch strip off, cut them into two and a half inch squares and they will make the border on the simplified version of the quilt. So you'll have a load left over and you can make the simplified version of the quilt. The other versions of the quilt have got, um, I've used more, you'll need more fabric for these. So you need a third of a metre pieces for this quilt and you will be able to make cushions as well. So I've got quarter square triangles in the borders on the bigger, slightly bigger that comes out at, I think they're three and a half inch finished squares. So once you've cut these out, you're going to end up with all your fabrics like this so here's that's what it'll look like once you've cut them out okay so i've left the templates on top so you can see what's what and that's the bit at the end that you've got left over so that's going to be your two and a half inch squares uh, for your border of your quilt so you will start by first job so your little squares together so you've got two colored two of the background ones, sew them together like in a checkerboard. So you'll end up with that. So that's your starting place. Once you've done that, you're going to take the next, the smallest size triangle. So you're going to have two cream and two coloured ones. And you're going to sew the coloured ones so that you need to make sure the coloured one is following on from a coloured square. So you don't want to sew that onto that side. So that there, it, it tells you all this in the destructions. So sew a col coloured one either side. And then when you've done that, you've got the two cream squares, which you'll sew either side of that. And you'll end up with this. So then you're just going to repeat the same thing again with the next round. So you pick the next size triangles up. And you're going to sew a triangle either side always making sure that the color is following round because that's what's giving you your snail so make sure you've sewn that colored bit above that colored triangle there and then again you've got these pale ones left over so you're going to sew them to the top and the bottom then you'll just repeat that again so i've done yet another row this is with three three rows done so i've sewn the again the coloured one the top and the bottom and the cream either side and you end up with one more set to sew on so now you're going to want the darker one is going to have to follow on from this one so it needs to go on the top here and once you've done that again sewing two coloured ones and then two cream ones you get your finished block and they're really quick to put together. Again, what I do is I cut them out the night before, come back in the next, I set them all out in their sets, come back the next day and sew them all together. And they go together really quickly. You can easily make this quilt up in a day, especially if you're just doing the squared borders, like I did on this one. Um, this one, I also added a little strip I did a one and a half inch coloured strip all the way around just to define, I thought it defined the snails a bit more, made it a bit more interesting on that one. Um, the other alternative you can do if you're not going to use the bit left over on here when you cut them out, this two and a half inch strip across here, if you're not going to use them um, for the borders on a quilt, saying you just want to make some snail blocks, what you can do is just make the first, just make up the first round. So let's grab a first finished round. 
Um, so the squares and the first round of triangles. So these, make up a load of these because they make quite a nice pattern when you sew them together. So you can use those and you can make things like little pots. This is a little pot holder I made ages ago. So it's been through the washing machine quite a few times. Um, make quite an interesting pattern, just an idea. So, in fact, I might cut some more of those. That looks quite good. Now I can see it on the camera, you can see the patterns better. I quite like that pattern. So anyway, these templates, I've got, they're on the website now and they will also be on Create and Craft with the matching layer cakes. Uh, I think it's the 15th, 16th of July. So it's the Saturday night, Sunday morning, um, middle weekend in July, amongst other stuff. Um, I'm going to do another video on all the new stuff that I'm going to have. So we've got lots of new stitcheries and a few little stitchery kits and bags and things coming on the show then. Um, I'm going to grab the camera now and show you the chaos that's in here because I'm cutting like crazy for creating crafts. So have a look here. See if you can see all the madness that's in this in this shed. So I've got all these, I've got piles of patterns ready for the elf to fold for me. Um, well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Um, see you again soon. Bye.